What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we are here with another edition of Overthinking MTG. And today's episode is brought to you by Persistence to this format, which is funny because I'm saying that three episodes after I just threw the format out the window to do something completely different. But let's look at a random magic card. And now I did click random just before pressing record, so I did see this in advance um, by about 30 seconds. Hence, what is what today is brought to us by because today we are looking at forest and i'm not kidding we're looking at forest this particular forest is from um m10 so the course set 2010 and we're looking at um this particular art was by a gentleman named jim nelson it is actually really lovely art i have to say um and we're probably going to talk about that like quite a bit because um man we're less than a minute in and i have to fill at least 10 minutes talking about this particular land or whatever comes to mind so prepare for the tangents brace yourself so the artwork here is pretty lovely it is very much um showing a kind of moss covered what looks like maybe a large oak tree a very large very gnarled um tree that is also very, very old. The sense of um, the sense of age is very real here, and that's kind of fun. It's it's showing. Um, I would imagine. See, this. I wouldn't be surprised. This picture looks to me like the covers, like the Alan Lee covers of um, of the Lord of the Rings novels. Like if you were to tell me that Merry and Pippin were on the other side of this tree taking a nap right now, I'd buy it. You know, it looks like. Um, what I would envision for Old Man Willow, you know, that kind of a look. Although it's not, it doesn't appear to be a willow tree. Um, I don't, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm certainly not an uh, arbologist, herbologist. Uh, I'm not from, uh, and for the life of me, I cannot think of the name for a scientist who studies trees. Um, and I don't know why that's escaping me so much, but here we are. So yeah, so it's a fun um it's an interesting look. Uh, I love the sense of scale. The sense of light is all very much here. It has kind of just that old forest and you can feel like there's a certain mystique about it like it looks like a very peaceful scene but at the same time um this is the kind of forest that has seen things that has a uh, that has a history so yeah the old forest in lord of the rings is one example that really comes to mind here it's really kind of popping uh for me anyway and then the other thoughts that come to mind are um, the trees from Game of Thrones. The name's escaping me right now. And um, actually, I, I'm going to go ahead and out myself a little bit here. And maybe this is going to be uh, something that we talk about more in detail over the next seven minutes. But uh, I actually have never watched the television show Game of Thrones. And I know that that's like, whoa, really, dude, for real? And like, well, part of it is I don't have HBO. And I haven't had HBO. So there's that. Um, and then the brief trial period when I did have HBO, I had Flight of the Concourse to catch up on. So I'm sorry, guys. I got my priorities. And believe it or not, rather than, you know, crazy epic fantasy stuff, I actually preferred uh, novelty bands from New Zealand. How does that work? I don't know, but it did. Trust me. And you know what? I don't regret that decision. It was an awesome show. But <laughs> I only had a month plus work and everything else. So, I mean, hey, it's, it's what it is. But, um... The, the other reason for that is I actually listened to the audiobook of Game of Thrones. And so I feel like I understand the story really, really well. I've, I've been familiar with all that. I had the, you know, like brain popping moment during the Red Wedding. Like just when that happened, it was just like, holy cow, that you can do that. So like, I'm familiar with all that. Like, and I feel like I understand the story really, really well. And I've talked with people who've only watched the show and haven't read the books. And they seem to actually coincide pretty well, except for the rather bummer of an ending that the show uh, had. And I did learn that, actually. I learned some spoilers on that. Anyway, that is all to say, um, this reminds me very much of those trees, like the grove uh, trees with the faces that um, in Game of Thrones, for the life of me, I can't remember what they're called. I know they had a certain name and there was a cultural significance to them and all kinds of mystical stuff surrounding them. Um, and it very much has that feel. That's the cool thing, too. When we think of history, when we think of ancient times and mystical days gone by, you know, the age of legends and the age of yore, we always think of human civilizations. You know, if you think of like King Arthur and Merlin and those legends, if you think of um, Beowulf and Ivanhoe and all these ancient, well, what we can consider now to be kind of these ancient stories that have transcended um, the age of man, even that is only a couple thousand years old. Like, compared to the age of some of the trees in our world and the stones 
it's nothing. The age of man is a blip in the universe. And that that is a really mind-blowing kind of thought. And a picture like this, seeing nature fully allowed to just be without the touch of humanity is something that can really bring some of that into focus. And I really dig that. That's something that, like, that kind of thing just blows my mind. Like, when you look at redwood trees that have stood for hundreds of years, it's just really mind-blowing to think. And And the other thing about that is these trees are simply one generation of a species. Species. That's the other thing that's mind blowing. The idea that trees can survive for hundreds and hundreds of years. And the truth is, that is one generation in its timeline. When we think of the age of humans, we think of these thousands of years that we've been on the on the planet, you know, there are structures in the natural world that predate us by billions of years. Like that is so fascinating. And there's there's something so magnificent about that. And the crazy thing is too. That's real. And so here we're looking at a painting, obviously, but that painting is inspired by scenes in our real world. There are forests like this that have stood untouched for hundreds of years in this world right now. That is so cool. And uh, the fact that it is, I... Like many of us out there, I mean, you're, you're watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast that's all about Magic the Gathering. So I'm guessing you may be like me in this regard. I love escaping our real world. I love fantasy. I love going outside the norm and experiencing the impossible. I love that stuff. I eat it up. It's the best. You know, when bills are crushing down and when you've got social pressures all over and you need to perform at your job and you have, you know, and your checkbook isn't quite balanced in the way you want it to and you're old enough that you're referencing a checkbook and even though you've never actually had one. <laughs> anyway, um, online banking was just coming into its own when I was, you know, becoming an adult. It was lovely. It, it worked out really nicely. Um, yeah, and so... Um, Anyway, that, that's a little bit of a tangent, but the, the whole idea is it's very easy and fun to escape into the fantastical, the 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 bizarre, the weird, the impossible. And then w- when you step back and you realize that there are ancient civilizations, there are mysteries, there are unsolved truths, there are... There are mystical powers in our world beyond our understanding. And you think of something like oak trees. If you think of something like redwood trees, if you think of these things that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and have been a species that have been on this planet for potentially millions of years, and those huge realities, those are real. Those are real things. Wonder does not only exist in fantasy stories. Wonder does not only exist within our imaginations, it is real on our planet. And I just find that absolutely fascinating. In addition to forests, in addition to trees, in addition to rocks, and, you know, geology is one of those fascinating things, too. If you look at, um, there's the, when you actually start digging into our world, some of the stuff you can see is phenomenal. But the other thing that I've always found fascinating is our oceans. The fact that we have like 70 plus percent of our world is covered in this particular mass and we've explored what like 10 percent of it and in those 10 percent we found giant monsters like we know there are giant monsters in our ocean right now like that exists it is a universe where things are operating in four dimensions and the creatures there have adapted in such a way that some of them it's mind-blowing to think of the stuff that exists within the confines of our own oceans. And that's, like, there's still so much that we have to discover. And that's real. Again, this is real. Science and science fiction, and fantasy for that matter, are all touching in the same realm. They're all they're all feeding into the same element of the human condition, this desire to see the wonderful. And that's something that is truly fantastic. And I know that I personally want to experience that more. I want to experience real scientific discoveries and learn about the world as it is today. Because right now, for the majority of my life, I've been escaping into fantasy worlds. That has been my wonder of choice. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
it is a beautiful thing to do, and I'm going to continue doing it. I'm going to keep playing Magic the Gathering. I'm going to keep playing, yeah, you know, I'm going to keep streaming on Twitch. I'm going to keep showing up to this, um, to this show. But at the same time, why not? sprinkle in some scientific journals. Why not look at some of the discoveries out there today? I've actually been a long-time listener of Radiolab. They're not, um, you know, they're not covering this at all, but I just want to say, um, ra- you know, Radiolab's a podcast that's all about science, science and discovery and history and basically anything that, any piece of curiosity that you have. And um, I've been listening to them for years. They put on a phenomenal show. Go check them out if, if you're not familiar already. I know they're wildly popular. Um, but it's just anything that makes you go, huh, they could explore that. And I would just highly recommend that you find those people who are naturally curious and surround yourself with them because you'll learn some really, really cool stuff. All right. Well, and we got all there. We got there looking at a piece of artwork on a basic forest from Corset 2010. So this has been fun, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. It has been an absolute pleasure. I think this is the third, maybe fourth time a basic land has popped up. And I'm committed to this format, you know, on episodes when I do this format. If it's random, it's going to be whatever lands on the first one. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. This has been an absolute pleasure as always, and I will catch you next time.